Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about erythrocytosis and what erythrocytosis is and what some of the causes of erythrocytosis are. So what is erythrocytosis? Well, if you look at the word erythrocytosis, erythrocyte means red blood cell, osis means abnormal condition. So it literally means an abnormal condition of red blood cells. But really what it means is that there's an increase in red blood cell number. So that means there's a hemoglobin of greater than 185 grams per liter or a hematocrit greater than 52% in males. And there's a hemoglobin of greater than 165 grams per liter or a hematocrit greater than 47% in females. That is the definition of erythrocytosis. If it helps you to remember, think of it as the opposite of anemia. So erythrocytosis, too much red blood cell mass, too much hemoglobin, too much or too high of a level of hematocrit. So if we get a lab value, uh, depending on if it's male or female, we see that the hemoglobin levels are 165 or higher, or 185 or higher, and hematocrit is higher than 47 to 52%. We get to think about two main categories of causes. And the first one I want you to think about is, is this actually erythrocytosis? Could it be a decrease in plasma volume? What does that mean? If we look at certain causes of decrease in plasma volume, if it is in fact decrease in plasma volume, it is not actually erythrocytosis, it is actually relative erythrocytosis. When we're taking the sample, it's too concentrated. We've lost some plasma volume, meaning that hemoglobin hematocrit levels are actually high because of decrease in plasma volume. What are some causes of decrease in plasma volume? Well, these include diuretics, severe dehydration, burns, and something called Geisbach's syndrome. They can all lead to a relative erythrocytosis. These can be easily managed by simply restoring the amount of plasma volume, uh, depending on the case. Now, if it has nothing to do with plasma volume, there's no decrease in plasma volume, plasma volume is normal, this is what we think about as erythrocytosis. This is considered absolute erythrocytosis. So what we wanna do first is we wanna distinguish, is it really erythrocytosis or is it uh, relative or is it absolute erythrocytosis? So once we determine it is absolute erythrocytosis, we can begin by looking at what are some of the causes of this erythrocytosis. So with regards to absolute erythrocytosis, we got to think about primary and secondary causes. Primary cause of absolute erythrocytosis is polycythemia vera. Polycythemia vera can be distinguished when we look at serum EPO levels. If serum EPO levels are low or normal and we have high red blood cell number or we have erythrocytosis, this leads us to believe that is polycythemia vera. It is a condition where there is an uh, inappropriate activation of red blood cell production without the need of EPO, or when uh, EPO levels don't seem to match the production of red blood cells. You can look at my video on polycythemia vera for more information about this condition. What we'll be focusing mostly is the secondary causes. What are some of the secondary causes of absolute erythrocytosis? Basically, these really have more to do with hypoxemia. And I want you to think about that. A hypoxemia person will lead to a compensatory mechanism whereby they're gonna increase their red blood cell production. A subcategory in secondary is physiologic. physiologic secondary absolute erythrocytosis. One of them is carbon monoxide poisoning. We decrease oxygen carrying capacity. Body responds by increasing the number of red blood cells. We can see this in smokers. Again, another one is heavy smoking. So these both tie in together. If, we, if patients have uh, low oxygen carrying capacity, they have hypoxemia for periods of time, they can lead to a physiological response 
where their body will increase the number of red blood cells that are produced. In high altitude is another one. So people that live in, live in the Himalayas or live in mountainous areas will generally have um, a bit of erythrocytosis. They can have higher numbers of red blood cells, higher hemoglobin levels. This is perfectly normal. This is how some people survive. This is basically a compensatory mechanism of their body that is making or doing this. Pulmonary disease is another category in the secondary causes of absolute erythrocytosis. Pulmonary disease can include COPD, again, due to hypoxemia. So if they're chronically hypoxic, their body responds by making more red blood cells. Same with sleep apnea. If they're hypoxic due to sleep apnea, again, this can lead to erythrocytosis. Pulmonary hypertension is also similar as well. Cardiovascular disease is also another category where the body responds and tries to increase oxygen carrying capacity, increases red blood cells. Some of these cardiovascular diseases include right, right to left shunts, Eisenmenger syndrome, and some other hemoglobin abnormalities like methemoglobinemia can lead to a increase in uh, red blood cells leading to an absolute erythrocytosis. But again, these are all secondary to something else, not like polycythemia vera, where that is a primary disorder. And to distinguish if it's secondary or primary, in secondary causes of absolute erythrocytosis, they have an elevated EPO. Now there's also cases where, unlike the secondary causes we looked at before, it was a, basically due to hypoxemia and a compensatory mechanism where the body responds and produces red blood cells, there's also inappropriate EPO production. There's increased inappropriate EPO production due to some other causes, and some of these include tumors. Tumors such as hepatocellular carcinoma, renal cell carcinomas, pheochromocytomas, ovarian tumors, uterine leiomyomas. They can all lead to, and they can all produce EPO without regulation. They can produce EPO on their own. They can lead to erythrocytosis. Other causes include androgens. Androgens can lead to an increased production of red blood cells. There's hydronephrosis, exogenous EPO. So if individuals are ingesting EPO, that can also be a cause of erythrocytosis. Polycystic kidney disease and post-kidney transplant. A lot of them have to do with the kidney, hydronephrosis, polycystic kidney disease, post-kidney transplant, because EPO is produced in the kidneys. If there's an enlarged mass, or if the kidney has enlarged its mass, it can actually produce more EPO, as long as the kidney is not too damaged. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of erythrocytosis? Or some of the signs and symptoms of erythrocytosis include headaches, dyspnea, presyncope, tinnitus. These things can all relate to too high of levels of red blood cell mass, can lead to hypertensive-like symptoms. There's also visual disturbances, paresthesias, so tingling numbness in hands and feet. There can also be symptoms of angina, chest pain, there can be symptoms of congestive heart failure. There can be splenomegaly. The spleen can um, compensate by increasing the destruction of red blood cells. It can enlarge, um, leading to splenomegaly. There can be hepatomegaly. There can be facial plethora, a little enlargement of the face with a ruddy appearance. There can be um, kind of ruddiness of the palms as well. So what are some of the investigations and treatment for erythrocytosis? Well, one of the biggest investigations um, you want to do is you want to look at serum erythropoietin levels or EPO levels. If the EPO is low or normal, consider primary um, causes such as polycythemia vera. If the EPO is high, think about secondary causes, physiologic or um, 
patho, uh, pathologic causes, um, and also think about inappropriate production from tumors, from uh, kidney issues, etc. If it's primary, um, such as polycythemia vera, consider genetic testing. I'm looking for JAK2 mutation. This leads to a majority of uh, polycythemia vera cases. And treatment is mostly based on the etiology. So for treatment for polycythemia vera, check out my polycythemia vera lesson. But for other secondary causes, um, for issues with hypoxemia, O2 supplementation, O2 therapy for the hypoxemia, CPAP for sleep apnea, and if there's any EPO secreting tumors, surgical excision for those. So that is the lesson on erythrocytosis and causes. Uh, I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.